welcome to the Vermont Dog Trainer Show. Here is your host, Ian Grant. Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, dog trainer at Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior on VFW Drive in Hyde Park. The show that delves into the behavior, training, socialization, and nutrition of your dog. A presentation of Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And here he is, the trainer, Ian Grant, with our first show of the new year. Well, Happy New Year. It's Happy good, New Year good, to good, you, good, too. Good to have you back. And, of course, with the new year, you get a lot of other exciting news. A brand new website, which is pretty exciting. And a new name for it too. So uh, tell us what that's all about. We're quite excited. This has been a few months in in the works and it's something I've been wanting to work on. So you can now find us. The new home of our website is vermontdogtrainer.com. Very simple. Yes. Yeah. A lot a lot simpler than uh, the, the previous old one, yeah. yeah, the previous website which we often had to spell out for yeah. for people. Right. Uh, just cuz it was hard to understand. So it has been completely revamped. To say we gave it an upgrade would be it, it's 10 times more than an upgrade. Yeah. I mean, it's a t- total facelift. I it, mean, it really is. I mean, and what we just looked at it a few minutes ago before we we started today and it just boy, it's just excellent. Just absolutely superb. And I I felt like if we're starting to pull in a lot of clients from 2 to 3 hours away, which are is actually almost becoming the norm now. Right. I really want to give people a picture of what we actually do, how we accomplish it, what kind of a a, a, a business we are, how serious we are about it, and I, I think this uh, website really translates you know, that me- that message right. to people. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Too. It looks Very really excited. good. VermontDogTrainer.com. All right. Well, let's start out with our first subject of the new year, and that's in Indoor training ideas. You know, now we're well into winter now, yeah. and that means a lot of our training has to be uh, indoors for our sake, probably as much as for the dogs, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's cold out. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. There, True. It's all there is to it. So, uh, and it's funny, I just got off the phone uh, this week with a, a lady who's got a teacup chihuahua that weighs four pounds. <laughs> four pounds? Yeah, and it's, go- an, and it's an adult, five yeah. years old. Right. And the dog, it's just too cold to go outside. Right. And it really just kind of got me thinking about, you know, the indoor training ideas and, and you know, really what's best for our dogs this time of year. Mm-hmm. Uh, treadmill is like number one. If you have a treadmill that's collecting dust and, uh, you know, we can certainly train your dog on the treadmill. It won't take us too, too long if you need us to do it. But training your dog on a treadmill would be excellent, excellent indoor activity that you can do with your dog. And we always suggest to go at a very, very slow speed. So mm-hmm. many people would think I've got to get my dog trotting on it to really uh, wear them out when actually we just want the opposite. We want super slow speed where they have to really focus, really concentrate, really just kind of mentally challenge them. (laughs) Going too fast on a regular basis, you're going to actually create an athlete. You're going to create stamina in your dog. Right. We don't want to do that. (laughs) Right. Exactly. And of course, then they got to get you. I mean, if they've never been on a treadmill before, I mean, there's a there's a bit of a uh, adaptation that you have to have to this. There's no no doubt. There's a learning curve to it, yeah. and and you know, like I said, it's something that we can accomplish pretty quickly. So if somebody just schedules daycare, then we can we can knock it out pretty quickly for our local listeners that that want to pursue that. Okay. Uh, hide and seek is actually a really good exercise. If you can get your dog to stay in one spot while you maneuver your way through the house and hide and then call your dog, uh, this really actually, if you believe it, makes them use their nose a little bit. It kind of works that search and rescue kind of thing. Hmm. And of course, when they find you, it's very exciting. Yeah, they jump up and down. Yeah. And that. Is yeah. that a right for them to do that? Jump up and down? I mean, at that point, you're also kind of working their recall too. Right. Meaning, you know, when you do call them, you want them to come to you. So right. that, to me, that's not a bad thing, mm-hmm. you know? I, I, we talk a lot about being calm, but when it comes to recall, you, you need a little bit extra gusto there to right. let them know they've done the right. Right. A little bit of reward saying, hey, yeah. good job. Good job. Right? Yeah. Without okay. a doubt. Well, that's good. Yeah. We always talk about using leashes inside, too. The majority of, we were just talking about this, myself and another trainer uh, this week, majority of dog owners will actually use a leash outside. The majority of trainers will use leashes inside. Hmm. And that's because we're doing a lot of training work inside. Uh, and that's where foundations 
systems can be built for that leash handling. So instead of testing your dog outside on a leash around a lot of distractions, we say, why not just use your leash inside with your dog? Walk around the house a little bit. Practice your sits. You know, do some do 15 or 20 minute sessions. It doesn't have to be, you know, hours on end, mm. but just something small like that can go a long ways with your dog. Right. I mean, it's the same process whether you're inside or outside. Just it don't is. have You just don't have the weather factors to distract them either. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and then we do some impulse control training. You know, you can put a dog on a blanket of some sort. Make sure they just stay on that, you know, small blanket. Move around a little bit. Keep them on there as best you can. Again, it's something to challenge them mentally. You're not you're not going to exhaust your dog physically inside unless you run them up and down the stairs, mm. you know, a dozen times. So right. don't worry too much about that. The, the, the physical will come in the summer when they can get out. Mm-hmm. But right now, just focus on the mental. Okay. That'll really help. All right. Uh, and then lastly, we talk about fetch or, you know, like the recall work for hide and seek. But as far as fetch is concerned, you can certainly make it to maybe putting your dog on leash, putting them into a sit. And if toys are their thing and they want to play and go after them, them. Maybe you throw the toy, but you keep your dog sitting next to you. So you don't allow them to go yet until you tell them to go and get the object. Right. So you're, you're creating structure to that. And it's not just this frenzy of throw, bring it back, throw, bring it back, throw, bring it back, mm. you know, over and over again. There's a lot of structure to it. So creating that sitting and that waiting until you tell them to go really kind of puts you in the driver's seat, shows them that you're in control of everything. So even though it's cold outside, there's still lots of things you can do inside to uh, to keep your dog sharp. Without so, a doubt. So when they go back outside on a regular basis, they're ready. Yeah. All right. Back with uh, our first question of the year from the doggy bag coming up in just a moment. Back on Talking Dogs with Ian Grant from Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior. Before we get to the question uh, this morning, uh, some exciting news about uh, your, uh, your facility. And uh, you're going to be on WCAX television coming up, uh, what, Monday night? Yeah, Monday night. Night at 6 p.m., uh, we will be featured on their Made in Vermont segment during the 6 o'clock news sometime between 6 and 7. Excellent. All yeah, right. we're, we're quite excited. They came up and uh, recorded some footage for about three hours with us and got all sorts of different things. So obviously that'll get condensed down into a two or three minute segment. Right. But, uh, yeah. I mean, to say we're starting the year off right is an That's under- great. New, yeah, new website and exposure <laughs> on Channel 3. Great. So we'll be yep. looking forward to seeing that on uh, this Monday night. Now, uh, Carrie and Stowe asked my own dog gets a little bit grumpy. Oh, wouldn't you know, we have a good positive show. We have a grumpy dog. Yeah. Uh, when my friends bring their dogs over to play, so what do you suggest? Well, like like we said, the, the easy answer is just tell your friends to stay home. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, um, I, I guess it really depends on what grumpy means. I, yeah. You know, grumpy can be, okay, I might just give them a little growl and go back to what I'm doing. Grumpy could be, hey, I'm growling, get off my property. Uh, I, my first thought is, if they're coming over to play, they probably do this a lot and maybe the dog just gets a little grumpy to start with. I I think it's just maybe getting a little proactive with it rather than letting your dog get to that grumpy state of mind. Mm. Maybe it's taking them on leash out in the driveway to meet, you know, meet the other dogs out there. So it's maybe not in the house, you know, and maybe finding out what it is that the other dogs are doing to make your dog grumpy. It could Mm. be that they're just excited when they get out of the car and could be jumping all over your dog and that's what's making them grumpy. So maybe it's not your dog. Maybe it's, you know, the friend's dogs. Right. So, And we always say if you want to record something like that and send a, email us the video of it so we can see, you're totally welcome to do that because we look at that stuff a lot. And if it's just, you know, something quick and we can email you with a quick response and a quick fix, then so be it. All right. Okay. Because we don't need grumpy dogs for the no. beginning of the new year. Happy anyway. dogs for 2017. Happy dogs for 20. There's, <laughs> our, there's our saying right yeah. there. Now, if folks have questions for you, how do they go about, has your email address changed at all with the new e- with the new a website yeah, so it'll be talking dogs at vtdogbnb.com. All right, yep. if you've got a question, all right. And again, be uh, be watching for Ian and uh, the Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior Facility on display on uh, Channel 3 this coming Monday night as part of the Made in Vermont series. So that's pretty exciting. So. Yes. Yep. All right, next week we're going to talk about snow activities on uh, Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, a trainer at Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior on VFW Drive in Hyde Park. Go to their brand new website for VermontDogTrainer.com. And for Ian Grant, I'm Roland LaJoy, and we are Talking Dogs. For Guys Farm and Yard, with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans.
Hey guys, thanks for listening to the show. For an up-to-date list of trainers that will be on in the future, please visit our Facebook page, Vermont Dog Trainer Podcast. This will give you an up-to-date list of what trainers will be coming up next and past episodes. Thanks for joining us.